Uh, let's bring in our panel. Susan Page, USA Today Washington Bureau Chief. Sam Stein, Politico White House Editor and former Florida Congressman David Jolly, who is no longer affiliated with the Republican Party. David, I'm going to start with you. Um, Kevin McCarthy, if he gets to be Speaker and if Republicans take back the House, yeah. two ifs at the moment, um, it's going to have a frontline congressman issue the same way the Democrats did. I mean, he's going to have a number of, of lawmakers who won in districts that Joe Biden won, who will be vulnerable if the House makes a big lurch to the right and focuses a lot on hearings and, um, you know, right. debating this idea that 2020 was stolen. And this is where the currency that Kevin McCarthy uses to get to the speakership actually has implications yeah. for those frontline candidates in 24. Look, I, I think Garrett's analysis is is spot on, but I would tell you, I don't think Kevin McCarthy has the votes right now to become speaker. Who does then? No, this is this is a very important nuance. There doesn't have to be somebody else yet. So the way the process works, and this is exactly what happened in 2015, Republicans go behind closed doors. Kevin McCarthy needs 51 percent of the Republicans to get the nomination of the Republican caucus. On the floor, he needs 218 votes. Now, if Republicans only have 220 votes, the way we prevented McCarthy in 2015 from becoming speaker, it's about 12 of us withheld our votes. Kevin McCarthy couldn't get to 218. So I actually think the reason Steve Scalise and others have endorsed McCarthy is because they're being gracious, knowing that when it all implodes, who's the Paul Ryan that emerges to take over the Republican caucus? There's a lot between here and there. And McCarthy has to promise probably to impeach Joe Biden. He has to promise Marjorie Taylor Greene a role, Jim Jordan a role. I don't know that he's got enough currency in his wallet to keep and hold this. He also might not have the House. I mean, the, the right. NBC <clears throat> projection on, on the House control has shifted slightly. Mm -hmm. It's still in Republicans' favor right now. 221 for the Republicans, 214 for the Democrats. Again, this is just a projection. I know this graphic can be a little confusing because you see those red seats over the line. That, again, is just a projection. It's plus or minus seven seats. So it could go either way at this point. Um, I want to throw it over to you guys, uh, Hallie and, and Andrea, for the next questions. I'll take this one. Thanks so much, Katie. Uh, Susan Page, let's talk about that because it's going to be a slim majority. You know, it's going to possibly be a sing single digit majority. You know, should the Republicans take over? It could be that narrow for them. What does the woman you wrote the biography of uh, do? We saw these fascinating interviews, Judy Woodruff, Anderson Cooper, this week with her after the attack. To me, I mean, it was ambiguous. She was expressing her grief, her concern that she had been the target and her husband was the suffering victim, that his head injury was more serious given that he had major surgery on it, you know, and that they weren't even telling him or talking to him at doctor's recommendation, talking to him about the event because it could be too upsetting right now in his recovery. That signifies significant. Yet she's, she's overseas, she's doing all this work, and she also signaled that she does think she's the one, the only one, and she's the legislative master. Does she stay as a minority speaker, potentially? She is a legislative master, but I, I think it I would be surprised if she chose to run again, and she would have to run again uh, with a Democratic caucus that is ready to move on to a new generation of leadership and with quiet campaigning having gone on for some time. Uh, to replace her at this at this moment. So, you know, she's left it ambiguous. Yeah, you can't, it's dangerous to predict what someone else is going to do. But she did say uh, four years ago that this would, that she would be out at this point, and she's never taken that back. So I think that commitment probably still stands. And it's, and it's certainly true that Democrats in her caucus who revere her, respect her, who fear her, also think, many of them, that it is time uh, for someone else Even to Even though there's over. no logical successor, there are different groups and no one with her strength, no one with her experience. Well, of course, she didn't have her experience when she started out, but I think the likely, I think there's a good chance it will be Hakeem Jeffries, uh, who is close to her, who has uh, been in a leadership position for for some time. Uh, I think that, that, that if I was uh, uh, had a farm to bet, I'd bet on him. Susan, real quick, do you think we'll know much before November 30th what the Speaker's decision will be, or do you think she'll go right up to the last minute to think about this? So again, dangerous to predict, but sure. I think she will give 
some notice. I mean, okay. I, don't, I don't think you'd go into election day not knowing if she's going to run again because there are other people who want. Adam Schiff also wants to run yeah. uh, for the leadership. So I think she would want to leave a little time as a courtesy and for the Democrats to kind of figure out where they want to go. I don't think she would wait until the 30th to announce. Interesting storylines on both the Democratic side and the Republican side. Mm -hmm. We heard from somebody who used to have this job, House Speaker Paul Ryan, just in the last little bit here. I want to play it. This is coming into us from our uh, from NABC affiliate, I should say, who caught up with the former House Speaker. Let's listen. I think we're going to have to do a lot of soul searching and, you know, head scratching and, and, and looking through and parsing the numbers as to why we didn't perform as well as we would have liked to have. Why do you think it is? I mean, I think Trump's kind of a drag on our ticket. I think I think Donald Trump um, gives us problems politically. We lost the House, the Senate and the White House in two years when Trump was on the ballot or in office. And I think we just have some Trump, Trump hangover. I think he's a drag on our on our on our offices. Sam, to you on that. Well, he first of all, he looks incredibly relieved not to be in <laughs> a position that uh, Kevin McCarthy is. Um, and he obviously speaks from experience. Um, he knows more than many people what a bind it is to be uh, leading a Republican Party while Trump is still the nominal head of the Republican Party. And I think, you know, Kevin McCarthy is in an impossible spot here. Um, should they win the majority, uh, he will owe it to Trump, who has backed him. Uh, he went down to Mar-a-Lago to resuscitate Trump's career after January 6. Um, at the same time, operating with a three-vote majority is nearly impossible to get anything done, especially that caucus. Uh, so, you know, especially I'm sure... Like Russ vote, for example, right. coming out and being oh, like, yeah, oh, and you know, this is... Members are going to have to defend a vote for Kevin McCarthy back in their just, home district. Just and, you the know. concessions he'll have to give, and David talked about it, the concessions he has to give just to get to that point. Putting Marjorie Taylor Greene on committees, you know, putting Jim Jordan in some leadership post, things like that that are going to really alienate a good chunk of the party and make it very difficult to get anything to Democrats. Let me just add one thing on Pelosi because I was I was I, I was Please. watching. The irony of her, of her leaving, if should Democrats actually win like a one or two vote majority here somehow, there is no one better suited for that situation, right? And Sam, you raised something off camera, and I want to throw this out, and Katie, you can follow up. What happens if a speaker, if there's a slim Republican majority, right. and they, a speaker gets toppled, and the last time that happened in the middle of a term, it was Jim Wright, I was covering it, but a speaker gets cop toppled and the party changes, control changes. Yeah. Is a new speaker elected or do they wait till the change of Congress? You know. We don't know. I mean, it's, it, in that type of slim majority, when you're talking about three or two members, there are retirements, there are deaths, unfortunately. There are people who defect parties or just leave Congress. But there's the, a way to replace this. Yes, of course. Well, I'm, I'm, chair, I'm uh, speaking more vote. about the instability yeah. of these coalitions. We are going to see so much instability, so much uncertainty over the next two years, regardless of what the outcome is, that all this chaos that we've dealt with up to this point will seem kind of quaint. <laughs> all right, Katie? let's... Um, let's